Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I explore what would happen if we took the engines from Blue Origin, the BE-4 and BE-3U that are meant for the New Glenn rocket and the BE-4 is also used on Vulcan from ULA and put them on the Saturn V. Uh, they have proposed, uh, Blue Origin has, a new Armstrong rocket to follow up on New Glenn, but we have no idea what that would look like. And I figure, well, what else would be a more reasonable or proper new Armstrong rocket than converting a Saturn V using their engines, right? So that's what I'm going to do, and we will see what the performance of that is. It is sort of an obvious idea, so I hope nobody else has done it, and I hope I haven't done it and just completely forgot about it. But uh, we do have a, well, we have a new model of uh, the Saturn V to work with here. However, I'm probably going to replace the first stage. And the reason why I'm replacing the first stage is why I often use FASA instead of something like the Katniss mod or BDB, and that's because, uh, well, a lot of stuff is built into here, right? So if we take the F1s off, we see that the first stage comes with these fairings for the F1s and the fins. Now, if I'm going to make a new Armstrong rocket and put BE-4s at the bottom of this, of course I'm going to want the first stage to be reusable, and we, we're going to have fins up here, uh, we don't want the fins down there uh, because they're just going to make an aerodynamic mess. And of course, if this is going to come in tail first to land on some sort of drone ship or barge or something, I, I don't want these fairings. These are these are not well. They might cause extra drag, but they're probably going to mess up the aerodynamics as well. So uh, I don't want that. So we're going to replace this with the with the FASA one, even though the FASA one definitely looks worse, okay? I mean, it is, granted, but it, it, it was an old mod, I mean, it was back in the day, so... Um, I am going to use this one, because it gives me more flexibility of what to do, and really we don't need the fairings for the BE-4s. And of course, if we're going to do these uh, crazy adjustments, it doesn't matter that it doesn't look exactly like the Saturn V, the Katniss one is definitely better if you're doing a recreation. We're not doing a recreation anymore. We're looking to the future, if you will. Uh, yeah, if you want to put it that way. So, how many BE-4s can we put down here? Uh, as far as why we would do this, well, it is more modern engines, so we don't have to use 1960s technology and, or sort of cobble together some adaptation of 1960s technology. We, we're uh, using engines that have been newly designed and made and that would be probably be for the best uh, if we're going to be looking forward instead of constantly uh, looking backward. So what I decided to put on here are 16 BE-4 engines with only the center four gimbling. So the other 12 do not gimbal. And we have them already like this. And let's see if we fill this up with BE-4 propellant and make sure that all the engines get into the right stage, of course. We see that we have a very healthy 1.5 thrust weight ratio at the start, and we'll turn off six of the outer engines along the way uh, to better match the burn time, but we'll have a faster burn time. But then we'll be getting to the same altitude quicker because of the better thrust to weight ratio. So uh, maybe we don't need so much thrust to weight ratio, in which case we can cut some engines, but I don't think we can have just eight on the outside. We would have to have at least 10 or we could have uh, just three on the center or something like that. Uh, that's an option. But right now we're going with 16. Now I'll put the fins and think about reusability later. First we are going to see whether this can do something uh, or do what it's supposed to do. Because if you take a look at it, now we have less mass. So there's less propellant mass in here. And maybe it's just about the same amount of delta V. Uh, but the reason we have less propellant mass is because methane takes up more volume than kerosene does. And so we've, we've got the same volume, and so we've got less mass in there. Now on this stage, I don't think we need to get rid of the Katniss version. The Katniss version will be just fine, because it has this removal of the heat shield, which is the one thing in the way here from us putting the engines that we need. And I believe we will need eight BE-3Us. The BE-3Us are currently configured to have 710 kilonewtons, which I believe is correct, but their ISP might be a little bit 
over overdoing it, uh, over optimistic. Uh, it really depends on what kind of nozzle they put. But uh, also, yeah, I, it seems like maybe they are not getting that kind of performance out of it. So I might have to nerf the BE3Us once we figure out what's going on with them, really. We have to put them further out so that they fit into the interest stage properly. And we should, of course, fix the fuel mixture. So that gives us 5 minutes and almost 30 seconds of burn time, a healthy 0.95 thrust weight ratio. So that's pretty good. And I'll save, and then let's deal with this stage. Here I'll put two of the BE3Us, so it's basically the same as the upper stage of New Glen, and we could just replace the S4B with the upper stage of New Glen. Uh, but the upper stage of New Glen is 7 meters in diameter. This is 6.6. .6. So the upper stage of New Glen would stick out just a little bit. These are configured to have 5 ignitions, so that will satisfy our needs. And then rebalancing of the propellant mix in here. And with two BE3Us in the, with the S4B, it's a 5 minute and 34 second burn time. So could we get away with just one? Potentially. Potentially. I think we'll just try to launch with the normal Apollo mission and see how that goes. I think that should be the least it can do for us, right? That maybe we should just do a all-up capacity test, but I'll use this as a way of checking whether there's something wrong with, well, obviously staging is wrong there, and anything wrong with the way things are set up here. All right, we are not actually going to the moon with this. I'm just going to test to see whether the staging all works out and what kind of margin we have left once we get to orbit, because I do think that this will overperform Saturn V, despite being less mass. So right now we have 2,500 tons compared to uh, basically 3,000 3, tons uh, closer to the end of the program. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how much is left in the S4B stage over and above what we need to transfer to the moon. And then I'll use that to judge how much extra payload capacity to the moon we will have. I'm not gonna judge based on the LEO capacity because this is optimized to go to the moon. So I want to know how much this can throw to the moon. And we'll just call it the new Armstrong rocket, even though uh, they are presumably planning such a rocket and I don't know what that will look like, but this is probably better anyway. So, <laughs> uh, all right, thrust, uh, throttle up, SAS is on. I'll just control it manually. I won't have the KOS script do it because the Apollo 11 KOS script has the particular timings for Apollo 11 and obviously those don't work anymore. But we still need to do special things like uh, the launch escape system and the skirt sep, so and also shutting off some of the engines on the first stage, so I might as well control it. So, ignition. And launch. Not exactly the satisfying rumble from the F1 engines. That's one downside. Yep, I'm... I should probably be even shallower than the Saturn V launch. I'm going steeper, actually. Okay, going through max Q. These engines could throttle down at this point. Okay, shutting down six of the engines. And staging. Oh, we don't have the separation motors on the first stage, I forgot about those. I left those off with everything else. Okay, there's our eight engines. Uh, the first stage did leave us going faster than the S1C would have. And higher. Skirt set. Launch escape system jettison. And so we don't really need to pitch up above prograde that much, not like the S2 stage did. The regular S2 stage, I mean, obviously. Okay, well, this is leaving us just shy of orbit, which is perfect, I think. Maybe going up a little bit high there. Alright, separation and ignition of the two BE3Us on this stage. 
a bit lopsided uh, shutdown. All right. Well, what does that leave us with? Well, it says we've got 4,375, so we have at least 1,000 meters per second extra compared to what we need to transfer to the moon. And I'm concerned about how much we can get over to the moon. So we can launch the whole Apollo mission with the lander. It's in there. Uh, and still have a thousand meters per second left. So what can this launch to the moon is the question. Well, let's load up some more so that we get 1000 meters per second less and see what we can do, what, how much that is. Okay, so right now the three stages are getting 13,252. So in theory, we could get as low as 12,252 and still be all right. So, no, that's pretty close. 62 tons. I haven't put the fairings on yet. It doesn't really hurt the thrust to weight ratios that much. Also, the 48 tons included the launch escape system, so we gotta watch out for that. Uh, we do dump the launch escape system along the way. Well, it's not a very big fairing. Probably, to be honest about it, we should make it a bigger fairing. That's a little bit less, so maybe I should just round it out to 60 tons. Yeah, let's just say 60 tons. Now, while it is theoretically possible to make the engines in these specs, I'm not 100% sure Blue Origin has done so because we haven't seen New Glenn at work yet. Uh, BE4s, I'm still uncertain a little bit about. Most of the uncertainty is with BE3U. Um, so we could, there is some room to nerf these and say, hey, maybe you can't do 64 tons, but, but it's still probably going to be better than the regular Saturn V. And maybe the first stage is reusable. We'll find out later. Uh, find that out later. 16 engines, I mean, maybe we want those back. All right, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. All right, definitely through max Q. Nice clouds. I'm liking the volumetric clouds now. But I generally like them, it was the orbital view that sometimes goes awry. Okay, uh, well, actually I'll wait a few more. I'll wait till 1 minute 48 seconds and then shut the 6 down. There we go. That'll be my standard timing for that. Okay, staging. Still forgot the separatrons on the first stage though. Okay, skirt set. Bearing set. Ooh, don't hit the stage. All right, staging. Well, we definitely need more out of this stage this time. But is it that much more? We'll find out in orbit. Okay, we are in a little bit of a higher orbit this time. Delta V wise, we have enough to transfer to the moon and I will test that. So, I mean, we're not going to be in a good situation for the moon transfer, I think, let's see. It would be in daylight around this time, so maybe we're not too bad off. Uh, 16, I, I mean, we'll just burn out from here after one orbit and see how it goes. So that'll be 60 tons to the moon. Well, that's a crash course. That suits me fine. We'll just smack into the moon with this. How about that? Modern engines, folks. We can do this. We don't need to keep up with the 60s technology. These are good too. <laughs> we can move on now. Okay. And ignition.
And it's still good to test it because MechJet might be reading it. That'll be wrong, but I doubt that in this case. It's pretty simple. And shut down. Let's see what we've got here. Well, I can just use the APS to smack it if we need to. But I think that's quite satisfactory. We're going faster than we ought to to the moon. We shouldn't be arriving in two days and 13 hours. That will take too much... Uh, propulsion to capture but anyway you get the picture it can do it so 60 tons to the moon with this puppy and um, so new new armstrong should we call it something different so it doesn't conflict with their uh the blue origins actual plans if they ever get to this point i don't know uh but maybe we should, should just call it new armstrong i need a name for it so that in subsequent videos when i test uh its landing you know recovery of the first stage i can refer to it and um, maybe, maybe we should just create a new model. Uh, what do you think? Should we create a fresh model for it instead of just using the Saturn V tanks or continue using the Saturn V tanks? I could just make something that looks completely different, uh, maybe with a Blue Origin leaf or whatever on it uh, to make it look a little bit more like one of those things. But then people could get confused that it's actually, actually a Blue Origin thing. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'll get your thoughts on that business. But it's a promising rocket. We could use it. It's sort of, it's sort of in the same ballpark as the Kasei rocket, though, which is worrisome. Uh, my own design, uh, though, I think it's probably. I mean, with with engines that are already available, it's more doable than the Kasei rocket, which requires the development of rather large Hydrolox engines of the cap class of the RS sixty eight, but better. Uh, so that's troublesome. So maybe this is uh, alternative. Maybe I could name it something that's... Because A just means Mars in in uh, Japanese. Maybe... Uh, what's another name for Mars, maybe? Not Ares, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, another name for Mars in some other language. Maybe, maybe we'll go with that as a name for this rocket. So that's a possibility. All right. Uh, though maybe we should just go with the moon instead, since... It is a Saturn rocket, and they were mainly for the moon. Could be either way. All right. So with those thoughts, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.